So in this section, we're going to speak about timing and we're going to see the real need behind synchronization and the use of PTP. So let's go back to our requirements. Let's focus on the two parameters that affect timing. And the first one will be low latency. So what is the challenge behind low latency? It's pretty much the same as in MPEG 2 TS, where you have two systems that are physically separated. And as digital systems, they need to have a clock to set the frequency of the generation of the bits. So both will have their own clock. It's based on a quartz. And both needs to operate at the same media clock, 90 kilohertz. The problem is that both having their own quartz, being in a different environment, different temperature, different humidity, the, the age of the quartz uh, is probably different. Both will operate at different frequencies. And actually, the quartz, by nature, will not be able to operate exactly at 90 kilohertz, but one may operate at 89,988, and the other one at 90,002. So both will have a frequency offset of few ppm. So the consequence of this is that when you're going to start sending a bit stream from the sender to the receiver, since they are not exactly at the same frequency, you're going to start having once in a while some drop in the bit stream. The receiver may have to drop some packets, some bits here and there, to resynchronize to the sender's clock, which is slightly different than the receiver's clock. So the solution to this is actually to implement a buffer. When you start buffering, you will eliminate these drops. However, you will increase the latency. And this is why it's very important for two systems to operate on the very same frequency to not uh, introduce latency. So how do we solve that with SMT2110? We're going to send to both receiver and sender the same clock so that both can have exactly the 90 kilohertz that we need. And this clock is called PTP. PTP will be the subject of the next section, but what PTP uh, provides in a nutshell is a frequency reference. It will provide a frequency reference to the sender and frequency reference to the receiver so that few times per second, the clock from the sender will resync so that it can keep 90 kilohertz. And the clock from the receiver, same. It will resync very frequently so that over time, there is no offset, there is no drift of the frequency, and we can keep the cadence at 90 kilohertz exactly. 